Hello there, it's Graciela here. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use Excel Connector and Power Automate to update rows in dynamic Excel files. For this, we're going to work with this Excel file. And what we want to do is our users to upload a file into this SharePoint folder. And this file will contain a column with an email. And then we're going to grab the user's profile from Power Automate using the user's connector. And then we're going to get that information and write it back to Excel. So our users will be uploading different files to this folder, and we're going to read those different files. And since we don't know in advance which is the specific file we're going to work with, that's going to make it dynamic. So we're going to set up Power Automate for it to work with different files that are uploaded to this folder. It's important that the file structure remains the same, like the table name and the table columns. Now let's get started and jump in into the Power Automate portal. So I will just go to my flows and then I'm going to create a new flow and this is going to be an automated cloud flow. We're going to use when a file is created trigger and then we're just going to click on create. First of all, let's select what's the site address and the library. And finally, let's select what's the folder we're going to work with. In this case, we are under shared documents and then we're going to work with user details. And for now, I am going to upload one file to my folder so I can create a base code. So let's go ahead and do that. And once our file is available, let's go back to Power Automate. And since what we want to do is to read the rows that we have in this table to get the emails and then populate them back, the first thing that we need to do is to add a new step related to the Excel connector and list the rows present in a table. In this case, remember that we are building the base code, so we are going to select the file that we just uploaded so we can build the base for all of this. So let's just select it from the folder, which is user details, and then let's select the user users table. And remember that for each row, we want to get the user profile that relates to the email, so let's just look for the user connector, and then we are going to use get user profile action and the UPN is just the user's email. So let's go ahead and just select our email from the list of rows that we are getting from the previous action. So let's select email. And after we get the email, we're going to get their profile and then we're going to write back to the Excel file here based on our email value. So now we are going to add again another Excel action, but in this case, we're going to use the update a row action. And again, let's select what's the SharePoint side, document library, and then our file. Then let's do our table, which we know it's users. Our key column is always going to be their email because remember that we want to identify each of our rows by one ID. In this case, our unique row is going to be the email. That's the column we are going to use to know which row we need to update. So the key value is always going to be our email that is also coming from the same Excel connector. And finally, we get to the area where we are going to update values. So in this case, I am just going to write uh, some random values here on our fields that you can see that were automatically generated or automatically identified by Power Automate because it knows which file we're working with, which table we're working with. So now Power Automate recognizes our old fields and we can easily update them. But in this case, what we want to do, remember, is to do it in a dynamic way. So we don't always know what our file or which file we're going to work with. So let's go to these three dots and then click on pick code. So you can see that the pick code section has some information about your connector and which parameter it's using. You can see that we have here, which is the drive or SharePoint that we are using, what's the file we're working with, the table ID that Excel online assigns to our table, what's our column, and we get to this final section where you can see that we have exactly the name columns that we have in our Excel table. So I am going to copy all of this and then just click on done. And then I'm going to paste it in a notepad. And now we are ready to just uh, go ahead and change and change these actions for them to be dynamic. The first thing we're going to do, let's go back to the list rows present in a table and I'm going to remove the file path. And 
and I am going to select the file identifier. So we are going to use this and just map it to the file path. And of course, after I do this dynamically and now I don't have an actual file selected, Excel is not longer able to recognize what my table is going to be. So I just close this and then I click on enter custom value and then in expression, let's just do concat. And after doing that concat in double in single quotes, we are going to write our table name exactly as it's written in our Excel file. So in this case, it's users. So we are going to write that same expression here and that same table name. So let's do OK. And now you can see that even though I changed this, my code here stays the same. So I don't need to do any change on that. I just jump straight to the update a row section. And let's do the same thing, remove the file path and then select the file identifier. And we are also going to get the same issue about the table name, but we know that we can use the concat function to just add it here. And we'll do the same thing. And you can see that the key column and key value, those two remained. But now we no longer see the list of columns we have in our file. Again, it's because Power Automate is not able to recognize our columns because it doesn't know which file we're working with. So what we need to do is just pass a very similar code to what we found when we were taking a look at the pick code section into this field. And to do that, we need to open a curly bracket and then just hit enter and close the curly bracket here. And in the middle of those two curly brackets, let's just copy this code and paste it in our uh, field. And one thing that I am going to do is um, just align them a little bit. And we need to remove this item part and as well as the backslash. And let's do that for all of our columns. And finally, we have this small JSON object we are building. And now we just need to replace each of our columns with the actual value we want to write back to our Excel file. So let's just remove this, this one. And here we want to know if the account is enabled. Then uh, we're going to go with the birthday and do the, the same thing for all of the columns. And now we are totally ready to test our file. And here it's telling me that this is not a valid JSON. So let's have a look. Yes, there is one double quote missing here. So after that, it should let us save. Yep, so after saving, we can just uh, go ahead and do our testing. So let's go to the corner and do one test. And then we're going to do manually and then click on test. And now I'm going to upload some files here. I also prepared another file that also has two other emails so we can see it working. You can see it here and I will upload also that one to the folder so we can see how Excel will automatically populate everything. You can see that our first file already ran the first trigger. So let's open that first. So it was this one. And sometimes the Excel connector can be a little bit slow. So it takes some time to show our data back into our file. So let's give it just a minute or two. Yeah, you see now that um, Power Automate successfully growed back to our Excel files. And we did that by creating this dynamic path using the file identifier and also by creating our dynamic JSON object that maps each column to each of the fields that we wanted to fill out. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.